allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for joining us this evening. First item on the agenda is a moment of silence. Please join me in a moment of silence for Edward Charlebois, a 1956 graduate of the North Syracuse Central School District. Thank you. Next item, Winter Scholar Athletes. Ms. Speech, here we go. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Bednarski was not able to be with us tonight, so Mr. Schuster and I will have the honor of handing out certificates to, I think it's 10 scholar-athlete teams. Um, and we're going to start this evening with girls basketball. So if the girls basketball players that are here could come up, and if their coach is here, please come on up and line up. Just make a line. Okay, um, Eric, would you like to read the names? Sure. And if you're, you hear your name, come on over and we'd be happy to give you your certificate. Kenzie White. Congratulations. Nicole Perigo. Morgan Seichen. Andy Feeney, she's not here as well. Ariana Corsonini's not here as well. And Jessica Cook, she's here as well. Congratulations, Jessica, nice job. You're welcome. Thank you to the girls um, basketball team. If you would like to follow the coach out into the foyer for some photos, that would be great. So thank you. Thank you. Boys varsity. Next, we're going to honor boys varsity basketball. If we could have the coach and the team come on up. Okay, I'd just like to uh, congratulate the boys basketball team uh, and their families and every, all the other athletes here for doing an outstanding job in their season and uh, obviously being here to be honored tonight. For boys basketball, we have Kyle Cody. Omar Mir. Riley Hogan, <laughs> Justin Kegabine, <laughs> Lorraine.
Lorenzo Thompson. <laughs> Eric Bowen. <laughs> Jordan Gannett. <laughs> Ryan Hauser. Jason Gunn. And Alexander Gray. And Lucas Merluzzi, Christopher Stoll, and AJ Fournay could not be with us tonight. Thank you. So if the team would like to follow Coach Haas out to the foyer for photos, we'd appreciate it. Congratulations again. Okay. Next, we're going to have ice hockey. So if we could have the hockey team up front and the coach. No problem. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. All right, first up, we have Matt Kramer. Jack Dorn. Dante Ayanati, who's not here tonight. Casey Koenig, who's also not here tonight. Parker Lane, who couldn't make it tonight. Joshua Ludden. Josh Matiasek. Ethan Osgood, who couldn't make it tonight. Daniel Quick. Derek Sorosi, who couldn't make it tonight. And Holden Sorosi. Well, you can take both of them. <laughs> it's his older brother, yeah. And Carter Wisely. Okay, please follow coach out to the foyer for photos. Okay, next, if we could have coach Bigford and the wrestling team come on up. And while they're coming up, I just want to congratulate coach Bigford on his retirement and an awesome career for building our wrestling program, so thank you. Uh, Alex Nobles. Uh, Bailey Sherborne is not here. And two brothers, Daniel Sweeney. And Zach Sweeney. Looking handsome there, buddy. Okay, follow coach out to the foyer. Thank you. Next up is girls bowling. Do we have, there they are.
Okay, for uh, girls bowling, um, we have uh, Caitlin Antonelli, who is not here tonight. We have Katie Clunan. Trinity Droz. Christina Gordon, who is not here tonight. Carly Lisensky. Good job. Josiah McGriff. Good job. Eliana Pitts. if you could head out to the foyer and wait for the coach to meet you out there he's going to be staying with us to hand out the next set of awards but head out to the foyer and he'll join you for photos in a minute okay next we have boys bowling and coach ellis is going to help us out with that since the coach is at another it's softball practice tonight so okay come on up guys Okay, first up is Nick Ball, who is not here. <laughs> Timothy Clunan. Good job, Tim. Kyle Patterson. Congrats, Kyle. Jonathan O'Connell. Congratulations, boys. Okay, guys, you can head out to the foyer, too, for some photos. Thank you, Coach. <clears throat> Next, we have Girls Varsity Cheerleading. everyone good evening um, before we get started uh, miss speech thought it would be nice if I let everyone know that we had a very successful season we won our eighth consecutive sectional title in a row and and then we moved on the states where we made it into the second round and then placed top five so congratulations to you girls for having an incredible season. Um, okay, so our first one is Pearl Ann Scro Savoy, sorry. Uh, Sharina Farhood, who couldn't be here tonight. Victoria Dunham, who also couldn't be here tonight. Haley Guider. Anna O'Brien, good job, babe. Ayanna Armstrong, who could not be here. Taylor Jacobs, good job, Tay. Danielle Christensen. Sierra Colombini. Maya Del Balso. Victoria Ramirez. Mm -hmm. 
Anaya Terry, who couldn't be here. <laughs> Kelly Hike. Good job, Cal. Jordan Sims. <laughs> Cassidy Hughes. Uh, and last, Isabella LaFace, who couldn't be here tonight. Okay, if you can follow the coach out to the foyer for photos. Nice job. Okay, we have quite a stack here. Boys varsity swimming. Coach, you have a very impressive crew here. <laughs> All right, first off, school record holder, Nate Ancona. <laughs> Dominic Bagazzi. William Carr. School record holder, Peyton Connors. School record holder, Steve Cooley. Tanner Dwyer. School record holder, Nick Engel. Michael Ferguson. Dante Ortiz. Jack Parrish. School record holder, Sean Payrot. Chris Parada. Garrett Petrie. Adam Rain. Daniel Shaw. John Smith. Robert Walter. School record holder, Eli Ward. Zach Hill. School record holder, Owen Flaherty. Ryan Heitman. Bruce Heppel.
David Hill. And Dylan Johnson. Thank you. I was impressed when you all walked up here looking so professional, and I'm even more impressed at how many school record holders we have. So, excellent. Please follow the coach out for a photo. Next up, we have girls track. Girls track. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we have the girls track team. Uh, first, we have Cassandra Baldwin, who could not make it. Mallory Bellis, who could not make it. Leah Bisgrove, who could not make it. McKenna Bradford, also not here. Kira Butler, who could not make it. Marissa Bukowski, who was not here. Sarah Davis, who could not make it. Sierra Davis, who is here. Emily Dabowski, who is not here. Mia Falgetano. <laughs> Aviana Fideli, who is not here. Sydney Florzik, who could not make it. Sarah Friend, who is not here. Shane Garner, who could not make it. Faith Kevill. Liliana Komansky, who could not make it. Alexis Kachowski, who could not be here. Hallie Kolakowski, who could not make it. Savannah Kerr. Heather Wonky, who could not make it. Maria Marullo is here. I was not here, but her sister Anina is next, and Anina is here. Okay, Jessica Moran, who could not make it. Alana Nyholm, who could not make it. Mia Pessel, who was not here. Amanda Riley, who could not make it. Samantha Riley, who could not make it. Shannon Sisko. <laughs> Ashlyn Slate, who could not be here. Abby Zumlos, who could not be here. Allison Thompson, who did not make it. Megan Trubia. And the last who could not be here would be Jamie Wagner, Shayla Webb, Lauren Wittick, Madeline Woods, and that would be the girls indoor track team. Thank you. Please follow. Oh, please follow. No, please go out to the foyer and wait for the coach because he's going to announce the boys as well. And last but not least, we have the boys track team. If they could, boys indoor track, if they could come on up. And while they're coming up, I would like to especially thank the track boys and girls who were able to be here. I know that there was a problem with the invite going out for your group because we didn't have the names earlier in the week. So thank you for being here tonight. 
Uh, first on the boys' side, we have uh, Sam Barber, who could not be here. Um, Isaac Bone, who is not here. John Catania, who is not able to make it. Malcolm Christian, who is not here. Ward Couillard, who did not make it. Andrew Delore, who is not here. Luke DePiro, who could not make it. Derek Harned. <laughs> Alexander Heppel, who could not make it. Jason Hughes. Yeah. <laughs> Zachary Kennedy, who could not make it. Matt Killian, uh, who could not make it. Ryan Messina, who could not make it. Mike McBride, who is also not here. Uh, Jacob Messi, who could not make it. Adam Mosier, who is also not here. And a school record holder, Anthony Pauly. Uh, John Paparian is here. Nathan Poyer, who could not make it. Daniel Swackhammer, who could not make it. Joseph Tricarico. Mm -hmm. And David Ware. Um, also could not make it, um, Alan Wells. And Mike Wentling. And Ryan Williams. And Joe Williams. And Jeremiah Willis. Great job, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Hey, now you can follow Coach Broughton out for a photo. Thank you. And congratulations again to all the scholar athletes. Next item on the agenda is this on? Yeah. Is a 2017-18 budget update. Mr. Keegan. Good evening. There's a lot of items on the agenda tonight. Um, while you take a look at that, let me try to give this presentation the proper introduction. Um, as you know, we have not received any additional information on our state aid for, for next year. Um, so we thought we would take the opportunity to provide more detailed information about our initial budget. There are some minor changes uh, in the numbers, but, but uh, nothing material. Um, but this will give us a chance to look at uh, specific um, items that are included in the budget. So let's start with the recap of the numbers. As you can see, um, this is a condensed version of our revenues and expenditures. So the first line on here is our non-levy revenues. That's uh, primarily our state aid and our other sources of revenue, such as pilots. We add to that our possible tax levy, and we call that a possible tax levy because the board hasn't adopted the budget yet. That's the levy at the cap, um, and our revenues for the 16-17 school year, the year we're in right now, uh, the budget was $155.2 million. Right now, our revenues for 17-18 are $157.5 million, um, which is about an increase of 1.48%. Um, unfortunately, um, that exceeds our projected expenditures for next year, which are $158.7 million, um, which is about a 2.2% increase. Um, so we right now, as reported on February 27th, we have a deficit of $1.1 million. We would need about a 0.73% increase in our total revenues in order to close that gap. Um, and we hope uh, to hear more about the final New York State budget by April 1st um, in time for the board to adopt the budget on April 10th. We're all too familiar with this slide. Um, this slide shows the last 10 years of our foundation aid, which is our most uh, significant component of state aid. Uh, during that period of time, the state has 
uh, short-funded the district, not funded us the amount that the Campaign for Fiscal Equity lawsuit required uh, that we be funded by about $137 million. This year, $9.4 million short alone. You can see that number here in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide. Um, obviously, this is the primary reason why we have a deficit. That deficit over time has resulted in the North Syracuse Central School District have a, having a spending per pupil that is lower than our peer group here in central New York. That's the Onondaga County, Cortland, Madison, uh, BOCES. Uh, we are uh, ranked 669th out of approximately 700 schools in the state with spending of about $18,600. Again, there's only one school in our area that spends less per pupil than we do. And people might ask, why do we spend so little? Uh, we spend so little because we receive so little. Again, back to that foundation aid issue. This is a recalculation of our tax cap. Uh, folks might remember on February 27th when we, we presented this, we had a 2.99% increase. Uh, the only piece of information that changed in this calculation, whoops, the only piece of information that changed in this calculation was our pilot revenues. Uh, pilot revenues uh, went down slightly, and as a result, the uh, tax levy limit um, went up slightly. So we're at 3.02 percent, which represents about uh, a $70 um, increase in um, school taxes on a home of $100,000 before uh, STAR. That's the, uh, that's the updated tax cap um, calculation. Now, Dan, did you, Dan Bowles, do you want to comment a little bit on enrollment? Sure, Don. This graph here, if you can take a look from 2007, it has a projection to 2021. Uh, we've been losing approximately 100 plus students a year um, over this last 10 years since 2007. Um, it's approximately 1,500 students, but this is the trend in central New York, and uh, we haven't been losing students as fast as other districts. Uh, we are still the largest uh, suburb district in the county. Uh, Liverpool is second to us. They still have 7,200 students, and our enrollment at this time is about 85.65. So, oh yeah, fire away. <laughs> so to, I'm sorry, to go beyond 2017, you just extrapolate. And is there some kind of data that live birth There's live data? Birth, go ahead. Sorry, Dan. There's live birth data that is projected uh, over the last 10, 15 years. And our cohorts, we usually had cohorts of about 750 each year. Those cohorts, um, on Fridays when you see some of the enrollment uh, information come to you, our uh, cohorts each year have dropped down into the 600s. And I think New York State might be the only state that provides um, live birth data by school district. So we can actually look at the kids born in our district and do projections on it. Annette, did you want to comment on this slide? So yes, thanks, Don. I'm going to speak to the next slide. Um, this was taken um, from reported information from New York State Education Department. And I'm going to try to clarify on this slide because it is a bit confusing. It's a dual access graph. And the left side speaks to our enrollment, which Dan just talked about showing um, how it's declined between the years 2007 and 2016. But then if you look at the um, right side of the graph, it talks about the percentage of students for free and reduced lunch. And when the two graphs were transposed, um, the, the way it shows here um, is a bit confusing, and um, several of us have asked a lot of questions about it. However, we decided to show it anyway. Um, and it was not a graph that we could alter in any way because it was taken off the New York State um, information. But the point of this graph is, even though our enrollment is declining at a steady rate, over the years our free and reduced lunch rate has increased significantly. And so I think it, it shares, um, it, it helps us to share with you really the essence of our community in terms of our taxpayers and the struggles that they're having um, economically and that we need to be mindful of that as we set out our budget. And I think Dan's going to speak yes. to the next slide. So this next graph talks about the increase in the students with disabilities that have been identified 
over the last four to five years. As Annette alluded, um, we're having more families or students with uh, need moving into the district. And over the last four to five years, uh, we've identified about 100 more students with disabilities. And we're having students move in with some significant needs uh, into the district. So with that happening, um, a year ago we had reduced uh, an assistant director of special education and within the budget we we're looking to restore that position because of the work that needs to still happen in the office. We are looking at supporting the new inclusive model and there's uh, additions for special education staff at the elementary and secondary level as well as support services with occupational therapists, physical therapists, and speech ther uh, therapists. Um, we're just seeing the needs of students and trying to make sure that we have the staff to help support the, the teachers in dealing with their needs. So we've been working hard to meet the minimum of the law, the federal and state guidelines to include all learners within the classroom. Our efforts have been centered around focusing on collaborating and supporting all of these learners. And we're seeing some successes already within the classroom, not only academically, but also social, emotionally being included has made the learners feel much more positive about being a part of the environment, which again, will have an effect on our academic achievement overall. Jason, you wanna comment on the consulting teachers? As you may know, excuse me. As you may know, we have a, uh, a team of consultant teachers that work with our probationary teachers for the full, I uh, was three, now four years of their probationary period. The consultant teachers are a critical part of the peer assistance and review process, and they provide one-on-one -on -one individualized support and instructional guidance to all of our probationary teachers. It's been a great program. We're very proud of it. Contractually, they're capped at 15 clients per caseload, and we have a, a boom. We have a very large number. It's a combination of an increase in the duration of probationary years and the number of retirements over the last few years. And so to keep it within the confines of that 15 clients, we're looking at expanding to a sixth consultant teacher for next year. And I'm going to speak for a minute here about co-curricular and athletics. It's no secret that um, back when the recession hit in 2009, we made drastic cuts both to... Um, co-curricular clubs and athletics um, were cut from the budget. In 2014, when the budget went down, before we put it back up, we had to cut an additional 16% from each of those budgets, co-curricular and athletics. And we have many groups who've been out fundraising um, in an attempt to keep on going. Some of them weren't able to keep going, but we're taking a look at this and we think that it's time uh, programmatically to take a look and we're hoping that we can restore um, some of these. And I know the question out there is going to be which ones. And we, actually, um, last year, uh, my administrative cabinet worked jointly with our board budget subcommittee, and we were hoping to be able to do some of this last year, and the funding uh, did not work out within our budget. But we did begin to talk and ha have a priority one, priority two, priority three type list. We're in the process of taking a look at those, and um, between now and the time that the board needs to adopt the budget, we will have more information in terms of um, how to go about that. We're looking at hopefully restoring the same percentage to each of those budgets. So the dollar amounts won't be equal, but the percentage of what we re look to restore um, would be. We also have changes in the 17-18 school year in the way we purchase BOCES services, particularly as it relates to um, information technology services. Uh, recently, uh, our BOCES Regional Information Center was audited by New York State, and they determined that um, it, the, the law requires that BOCES services um, be uh, cooperative, collaborative services uh, across multiple districts. And in order to do that, um, they're limited at a service cannot be supported by more than 0.6 of an individual. Um, and so we've looked at our staffing and, and things we're doing in, in the IT area, and in order to be in compliance with the law, 
wherever we have in one coast or one service more than 0 0.6, we'll make the trade between canceling the BOCE service and hiring additional staff. And we're in the process of working with the RIC on that final organization structure um, so that we can continue the good work that we're doing in the information technology area. So is that adding additional? So what it'll do is we'll, no, what we'll do is we'll, um, wherever we have a service where we have more than a 0.6 person staffing it, we can't do that in accordance with the law. So we have to reduce that to 0.6. And then to the extent that we still need that service, we'll need to hire that. So for example, we have um, in one service alone, we have two individuals. So we're working with BOCES on the best strategy, but we won't get it from both places. We'll cancel the BOCES service, therefore not incur the fees um, if we have to hire the individual. Um, so Eventually, it's going to be more than a 0.6 based on our needs. Based on our needs, it, but it won't be. We won't be able to buy a particular service from BOCES that is is staffed by more than a 0.6 person. If we need more than 0.6, we need to hire our own person. That's the concept. Okay. Um, and so, and one thing that's you know, information technology is a very fluid area. So it's it's changed a lot for the district over the last couple of years. And so our needs have changed. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to recast the department. We, with all of our mobile devices uh, having been deployed and moving to more Google Classroom environment um, and implementing the wireless, we've really changed the character of that department. And so uh, this is an opportunity for us to take a look at the staffing and, and uh, make sure it's uh, directly uh, meeting the needs of our users. In the area of security, we continue to work really hard on both uh, constantly evaluating our, our environment uh, to ensure that our students, staff, and community members are safe, um, and to make uh, specific enhancements. Uh, the list that's here, one of the areas we focused on is our single point of entry. And um, as everybody knows, uh, uh, we did a project last year where we reconstructed the entryway at the high school to control um, entry to that building so that it's more secure. We're doing similar projects this year at Gillette Road and the Junior High. Um, and next year, we're going to be focusing on Roxborough Road Middle School. Um, it's also important to note, as we're designing Bear Road and, and, and work moving forward on that project, that that will be a more uh, controlled entry point um, implemented when that building uh, opens after the construction. Um, and we continue to evaluate our staffing, uh, looking, at, looking at our strategies and listening to our employees and um, and you know, and continuing to uh, to look at the best way to provide coverage and comfort uh, to our employees, uh, so that they are feeling secure. Uh, as, as the board might remember, we we uh, used some smart schools money to upgrade our access control, and that project's uh, substantially complete. And we've been working on our camera system, so uh, it's an important area um, in our budget, and we're trying to um, uh, complete these projects, particularly these entryway projects, as discrete capital projects that are um, $100,000 or less and included in our annual budgeting uh, process. So you'll see a line item in the budget uh, that <coughs> encompasses the Roxborough Road Middle School entry project for next year. So Cynthia, could you, I mean, I, I, we, if we have talked about a new card reader program. You know, yes, ac card. the access control. Yes. All of the, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All of the panels uh, in our schools have been upgraded, as has the security um, uh, software in the background. It gives us a lot more flexibility, a lot more control. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of things to integrate that technology so that it's uh, uh, more real time for us. And so that's, that's, that's so been the, underway. The, the things on the door are the same. The yeah, that, the, the reader same. hasn't changed, right. OK, so just behind it is what's yep. upgraded. That's okay. correct. This one's <clears throat> This is a repeat slide from um, our February 27th uh, presentation, uh, pretty consistent with our practices uh, over a long period of time uh, in an effort to keep our buses um, at 10 years old or less. Uh, we're purchasing 10 65 passenger uh, diesel school buses next year. Uh, we are pa uh, purchasing two special needs buses, uh, one a 42 passenger and one a 48 passenger. The 42 passenger will have a um, wheelchair lift um, and we're also, uh, like uh, this past year, um, uh, where we, uh, we purchased a uh, truck uh, for our M&O department, we're purchasing a plow truck this year. We have a very old plow truck uh, that got a lot of uh, work last week. Um, and uh, we, um, 
that's included in this year's budget. The dollar amount of these 13 vehicles is, is about the same amount as we spent last year, and it represents about $2.10 um, per year for a house assessed at $100,000 before STAR. So to summarize, um, this is a, you might be thinking, wow, there's a lot of neat stuff in this budget, but we still have a $1.1 million deficit. How does this work? And so, so first of all, we remain hopeful that when the final budget comes through that we will get additional aid. Uh, we're also realistic. Um, uh, we, we don't necessarily expect that we're going to get $1.1 million of aid, but again, we're hopeful. Um, and we'll see what, what happens uh, when, we, um, when the, the budget's finalized, if it's finalized on time. Uh, there is a possibility that it wouldn't be finalized on time. That's not unprecedented in public education. And so we'll just have to wait and see what April 1st brings. Um, however, we're, we're, we're feeling uh, that each year as we've gone through the budget process and funds have been tight, we compress our, our, our decision-making process into a few days, and it, it, it creates a lot of stress on the organization, and I think it, it sometimes uh, makes uh, thoughtful decisions difficult. And so one of the things we're going to try to do this year is we'll look at how much aid we get, and if we can somehow do everything we've laid out here, we'd like to do that, even if it means taking a little bit of money and a fund balance, and, and, and then taking the next 12 months to, to deal with that fact. And so. Um, we've, got, we've got a lot to process. We'll see what information we get from uh, the, uh, the final budget, um, and we'll be back to the board, hopefully, to, uh, with a final budget and proposal on April 10th. The vote and election process hasn't changed. Uh, a north and uh, south location at Cicero L and uh, the district office, respective, respectively. Uh, we'll, we'll have the polls open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and uh, the information's there uh, on the slide um, regarding registration, and we certainly encourage um, everyone to talk up uh, with the registration process, and if they've got questions, to uh, chat with Connie Gibson, our, our district clerk. Um, again, on April 10th, we will have a final proposal for the board whether the uh, state has finalized their budget or not. Um, on April 24th, we'll be looking at the BOCES um, election and uh, budget vote, uh, budget hearing on May 2nd, and the um, actual budget election or budget vote on um, May 16th. Any questions or comments? Paul. Yeah, um, I got loud. Um, I'm trying to think where to start here. I mean, I, mean, I'm, I don't want to know if we use the word please, but it's just, I'm happy to see things you're able to put in here given, given the constraints. Uh, we had uh, several groups come before us and talk, and I was going through my notes trying to find some common threads throughout, and I can see here some of them were addressed. There was uh, directors addressed more than once, uh, OT, PT, special ed staff, we've talked about them. I'm, I'm happy to see that speech. Uh, the security issues. What I don't see, and I just wonder if somebody could speak to it. Uh, I know we can't do everything. Uh, I saw a theme of, or heard a theme of TAs uh, needed throughout several different buildings. One thing that stuck out, and I went back and found it again today, and, and maybe you could tell me it's not true, then I'll be happy. Uh, <laughs> the counselor ratio at the high school was, I, can't, I saw a figure 1 to 230, and somebody made a reference of the recommendations that are in, it's not a mandate, but a recommendation. And I saw social workers several times. Now, I know we, not several, but two or three. Um, I know we added a counselor last year, and that was difficult to do. Uh, so I guess my question is, you, you mentioned the, we may get more aid. And we have this gap of, what, 73 basis points, that, that's the 1.1. 1.1 million. Yeah. Um, if we get more between now and then, obviously we'd want to, I think we want to fill that deficit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we go beyond that, can we look at some other things, I guess, is my question. And once we adopt this, if they come in late, I mean, we adopt the spending plan, we adopt the spending plan, correct? So that's, yeah, just wanted to make sure I understood that piece. Right. Mine's 
That's not working. I don't know if it will. Um, Paul, let me attempt to address some of your concerns. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said we probably can't do everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're kind of taking a chance here at biting off as much as we are. And we did try to address many of the needs, especially um, in regards to the special ed model and some of the things that were um, highlighted in Dr. O'Neill's report, as well as what we learned throughout the year. Uh, we did add a social worker last year. We are still concerned about our counselor ratio. Um, however, at this point, we can't do everything, and we're really just going to continue to take a look at that. As Don indicated, we'd be very surprised if we got the 1.1 million. If we did, we'd be thrilled, and you know, then maybe we could look at a few more things um, in terms of still dipping into fund balance. Uh, but you're right, there, we may be adopting a budget without knowing what we're going to get. And we can always keep our eye on, on that. But uh, the way the process works, once the board adopts the budget and the voters approve it, that is our spending plan for the year. So our tax cap is 3.02%. So that, that's what we would increase our budget to. That's what, we'll by me, so. we'll that is pretty confusing. So, so there we, are two sources of revenues for the right. district. Uh, our tax levy, which is the tax cap calculation, and state aid. Those are the biggest sources we have. So the, the spending, you might have noticed, is going up about 2.2%. <laughs> um, and that's the overall budget of spending is going up 2.2 percent. The tax levy, which is a, a large chunk of our revenues, is going up 3.02 percent if the board adopts a budget at the tax cap. Okay. So the a homeowner's taxes would go up about 3 percent. So that's the that's that tax cap, the, the 2 percent tax cap they always talk about. It's not really 2 percent. That's mm -hmm. right. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You got it. So ours calculated out to be like 3.02. Exactly. So we're, we're adding additional people, which is great, but we still got a one point something deficit. That's right. But how does that, how does the number crunching even all out there? Well, it doesn't, it, the point is it doesn't even yeah. out right now, and that's, that's why we have a deficit. We took the governor's budget and we added it to our revenues with the tax cap at 3.02, and we put our spending budget together as conservatively as we could, incorporating salary increases that were negotiated and any other projected cost increases. But we also went through and we looked at areas where, um, where the budget, we could trim it, you know, maybe energy costs or, or other areas where maybe we weren't quite spending what we had previously budgeted. We trimmed everything as much as we could and we came up with a budget. Um, we hope to close that gap substantially with the final state aid budget. You know, the final uh, New York State budget that comes out April 1st. So if we don't get that 1.1... Then we'll have to revisit it, and, 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 but one of the things that we're thinking about is, is potentially taking the difference out of fund balance at this time, and over the next 12 months, having thoughtful conversations about, you know, where, where, our, you know, where we need to be reconciling our revenues to our expenses. We just think it's a really difficult process when mm -hmm. you find out on April 1st how, how can you have a very collaborative process with 10 schools and all the constituents? Yeah. And so we're just, you know, that we're trying a new approach yeah. that is particularly important given the fact that, um, you know, we've made cuts over so many years, there's not a lot of obvious places to, to cut. So, and, and our, the places we've added are obvious, as Paul mentioned, are places where we really do need to increase expenses. That's the thing, I don't, I, I can't argue with anything. We need all that. I was just wondering how we were working on the deficit. Okay. I think, I've, I think I've got all the, I'm not a numbers person, so this right. is confusing, but thank you. Any other questions or? Oh, did I, did I do that? Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Mary. We're going to invest in batteries. <laughs> yeah, you get the budget so, for that. It's not in the budget, sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to make a slight adjustment to the budget for batteries. Go ahead, Mary. So in the past, um, our fund balance has not been in good shape as, as far as what the state recommends that we have in fund balance. 
How are we doing today? So we're, we are um, just shy of a 4% cap that the, the state gives you guidelines that you shouldn't have more than 4% of your fund balance. And so we've worked really hard over the last several years to build up our fund balance. Um, frankly, so that when we get in situations like this, we have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, most of our counterparts, um, in, in, certainly in central New York, um, have used the strategy that we've just shared with you, which is where possible, take some money out of fund balance, and kind of create that soft landing as we look at our programs. Dan mentioned enrollment's declining, uh, but our enrollment's not falling precipitously. Um, you know, we're not hitting any break points where major expenses are going away. Um, but certainly over time, as enrollment declines a little bit, we can adjust our expenses accordingly. Um, but our fund balance is in better shape than it's been in, in the history. In the last two years, we've not been a district under fiscal stress. So our plan to borrow from it, if need be? If need be. It will be okay to do that? I think so. Okay. And so um, you had said that the state budget is not finalized yet. We had a public forum here with legislatures that came. So um, Annette, it's still not too late for people to speak out, correct? <laughs> That's correct, Mary, and I was going to mention something about that under superintendent's comments, but I'll take a moment now to do that. So we did have a, a forum, community forum, not too long ago, held jointly between our district and Liverpool. And for those of you that were able to make it, you know that we provided letters um, and phone numbers and email addresses and so forth so people could contact their legislators and voice their concerns about this need to increase foundation aid. If you were not at the forum, just go on the district website. You can watch the entire presentation and certainly um, click on the information that's available, readily available, uh, in terms of contacting legislators to stress to them how important it is and how much in need of additional foundation aid we really are. So thank you for mentioning that. Any other questions? Next item on the agenda is the community survey results. <laughs> the clicker. Thank you. Everybody knows how I am with electronics. I had three people tell me it's the big green arrow to change the slide. So um, as you recall, last year, uh, around this time, we started something new with a community survey. And we presented the results, and we decided that we were going to try to do this on an annual basis so we could kind of get a, a measurement of where we are um, in terms of comparison from last year at this time to now. And the results I'm going to present tonight are very um, preliminary, and they focus um, only on the major results for the district as a whole. So the survey was run uh, off the website from January 10th through, Jan through February 28th, and we really went to a great extreme to kind of advertise that it was out there. Press releases, uh, email alerts, text alerts, and so forth. I have to say I was very disappointed in terms of the number of responses. We were hoping to get more this year since we advertised it so well and you know people knew from last year uh, what the survey was all about. But unfortunately, it was down uh, a little over 700 participants from last year. 931 of the 1,074 respondents, or 85% of the respondents, had at least one child enrolled in school. And this shows the um, number of people who responded for each of the buildings. And the big tall bar, you probably can't see the schools underneath. That is the high school, which um, I find very encouraging because we often say the higher up you go, the less involved the community and the parents are. So I thought that that was a good sign, and I believe it was similar last year as well. So the survey question had uh, several categories. Um, climate, academics, communication, safety, um, it's difficult to see, uh, reporting, um, and so forth. And that lists the number of questions for each of the areas. 
So I'm going to briefly go through um, the responses. In climate, my child enjoys uh, going to school. 84% agreed or strongly agreed. This was down 1% from last year, so not much of a change, but a slight decrease. I feel welcome at my child's school. I was pleased to see that this was up 4%. 88 respondents agreed or strongly agreed. So um, I, you know, I think it's safe to say that we see a slight increase in how people are feeling welcome in their child's school. For academics, my child is challenged to his or her full potential. 81% agreed or strongly agreed, down slightly by 1% since last year. My child is provided with academic opportunities that support his or her interests and needs. And this one's very important to me because those words come right out of our district mission in terms of that we're really trying to provide opportunities and experiences for our kids. 82% of the respondents agreed or strongly agreed, up slightly 1% since last year. Communication, I'm informed of events and activities. And we had, this is huge, we had 92% of respondents agree or strongly agree, up 3%. And I would say, um, although we don't know until we look at some of the comments if people even commented about this, but I would think that our e-blast and our text blast and the, the work that we're doing with trying to get the messages out electronically in terms of what's happening um, has helped in this area. So that's a good sign. Safety, my child feels safe at school. This was interesting. 89% of the respondents agree or strongly agreed with that statement. However, it was down 1% from last year. And then for the bus safety, it was up 1% since last year, with 85% uh, agreeing or strongly agreeing with that statement about feeling safe on the bus. And keep in mind, this is the community and parent survey. And if you recall, later on, more towards summer, last year we had given you the response of a student survey with similar questions and um, I always think about that with a you know that the parents feel one way about their children being safe and it's always interesting to see how the children's perspective relates to that whether it's similar or different and we will be doing that again uh, later on in the spring and sharing those results with you probably more towards summer in the area of homework and reporting the amount of homework given to my child is appropriate this was up 2% from last year, so you know maybe we're doing a little bit better in terms of the type of, of homework and whether it's appropriate or not. Uh, the level of difficulty associated with my child's homework is appropriate. 85% agree, agreed or strongly agreed, and it was up 1%. And I know that we have been doing some different work with grading and studying that and talking about our homework policy, so we'll be looking um, at, at that in more in depth. I receive enough information to understand my child's academic progress. I was very encouraged by this, that it's up 4%. However, it's still only 81% of the people agreeing or strongly agreeing. When you think about it, when a score is around 80, it's okay, it's not great. There's still a lot of room for improvement. Engagement, I am involved in the decisions that affect my child's education. 81% agreed or strongly agreed, up slightly 1% since last year. I have appropriate opportunities for involvement in my child's education. This only 76% agreed and strongly agreed, and that percentage is exactly the same as last year. So um, this tells us that this is still an area that we definitely need to work on. Responsiveness. Teachers are responsive to parent and guardian's concerns. 86% agreed or strongly agreed exactly the same results as last year. School administration is responsive to parent and guardian concerns. This was up 1%, with 82% strongly agreeing or agreeing. School facilities are well maintained. So 92% agreed or strongly agreed, which is still pretty significant. But last year, this was one of our highest areas. So it's down 2%, and I'm wondering if all of the advertisement that we did about the Bear Road renovation might have had something to, to do with bringing to the community's attention that our facilities in certain places really are in need. So that could have an impact on this. <coughs> Overall, I'm satisfied with the North Syracuse Central School District. 82% agreed or strongly agreed, up slightly up 1% from last year. So. Um, as I mentioned, this is just the preliminary results of the district overall. Um, Mrs. Cook is in the process of compiling them for each of the buildings. The building results will be shared with the, um, certainly with all of you when they're available, with the principals, with the building planning teams, 
And all of that, um, when they're finalized, will be posted on our website for anyone in the community to take a look at. And once again, um, I'll be working with my superintendent student advisory council to kind of put out the student survey again this year, and we'll be back to talk with you about that. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Annette. Section three comments from the audience. We do have one speaker uh, requesting time, pass for Would like to address the Board of Ed. <coughs> Connie? Yep. We're timing you, Pat, three minutes. I, I understand. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate your time, and um, I also appreciate how difficult this process is. Um, being that it's only one year that I sat in that seat to where I'm sitting now, I, I get it. I haven't forgotten the process. Um, I uh, looked at tonight's uh, budget presentation, and that prompted me to then look at the special ed audit that um, became available to us, ironically, on my birthday. It was February 16th. It was supposed to go out to the public then. Um, so I guess my primary reason for addressing the board tonight is because I saw that there was the addition of the newly deleted um, assistant director for special education. Um, because I haven't been uh, as involved this year, I understand that there are things that I don't know, you know, as far as um, things that may have um, been encumbered during the inclusion process. Um, but I did not notice in the audit any support for adding that additional assistant director. I did notice um, there were several comments about communication. I did notice that there was um, several comments about um, on not people not understanding whose job function was what. Um, and quite frankly, I noticed that unfortunately for Annette, she has encountered quite a bit of the excessive work um, that has been you know, taken on during this process. So first, I want to say thank you to Annette for taking on that additional work. But um, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't appear as though that department is running as smoothly as it possibly could be. Um, and I, I personally have not felt, nor do I currently feel with the information that I have, that it would warrant the additional director. Um, I do have questions as to why not um, a counselor or a social worker, something that would um, add to support uh, mental health services um, for students. We have um, just recently today actually received information uh, about a, um, a panel or discussion regarding drug usage in our community. I think that's great that we're starting there, but we need something that's going to help students um, beyond you know, parents because our kids really need somebody to go to within the school district and the school teachers need that support as well. So, um, you know, I guess another positive thing is to say that it's exciting to see the addition of the consultant teachers, the additional teachers and teaching assistants. Um, that's all exciting, um, but unfortunately I was not too excited to see the director. Thank you. Item 4A, Board Committee Reports. Uh, Mary, the Policy Committee. Um, unfortunately, Winter Storm Stella interfered with our Policy Committee schedule. So for um, the month of March, um, we did not have a meeting. Um, but our next policy meeting is April 11th. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Liz or Paul, anything on the legislative side? Just so we had the forum March 9th, um, yeah. there's still yeah. time to get out there and hound the legislators and the governor, quite frankly, for more funding. 
um, we're in the process of setting up another meeting. Excellent. Anything else? Board comments? Committee okay. reports? We'll start with Jackie. Um, I had an opportunity to go twice to musical at the high school. Um, it was spectacular, as always. Um, it was interesting because the week before I got to go to the FM, the Fave of Manlius musical, which they did Phantom of the Opera. Um, and I have to say, we're just so great. <laughs> I mean, right. they did a nice job, and I thought, I'm sorry, they did a nice job, but I don't know. There's just something, they put something more into it, um, and they, they just, it was just, it was just great. Um, they really encouraged the kind of talent um, that we see in our, in our district, and, and they really helped that to shine, and I was just so impressed with that, um, with the amount of work that they did. I, I know how much work they do, so very thankful. I appreciate Wonderful. all the work that the teachers and the advisors do as well. Thanks. Thank you, Jackie. Anything, Paul or George or one down this way, Mike? Yeah, uh, first of all, I just want to thank Liz and Paul for their work on the Legislative Committee uh, for bringing forward that forum um, working with Liverpool. Um, we had a good turnout. It would have been nice to see more people. Um, I just want to remind people, uh, a few years ago when we had our forum, we filled this entire auditorium to standing room only. This room fills 1,500 people. We moved the needle after holding that forum here. Uh, we helped eliminate the gap elimination after that. Our legislators heard us. Um, there were numerous events after that one that also drew full houses for those events. Um, I was doing some research. There's 30,000 voters in Cicero alone. Uh, 30,000 taxpayers that pay school tax to the North Syracuse Central School District, and that is not inc including North Syracuse, Clay, Salina, and other municipalities that are included. We could fill this room every day for a month to inform all of these people. If we were to be able to do that and communicate out in an effective way, uh, I think that would send an incredibly powerful message. There's strength in numbers, um, and we've seen our uh, work be able to be accomplished by uh, properly informing the community and doing that. Um, it's important to let people know that we've lost $150 million over the last 10 years. We are in the situation we're in now because we were promised money that was taken uh, illegally away from us, but the governor doesn't seem to care. So I just want to thank you guys uh, for helping put that together. It was a wonderful event, um, and I look forward to working with Bosey's, Jody Manning, and others to continue the push for that. Second, uh, I just want to touch on the budget presentation for a moment. Um, as some of you will remember, a few years ago when we were in these discussions, I was not uh, in favor of uh, keeping on one of the assistant directors of special education. Uh, I understand the need for the staffing. Um, however, reading through Dr. O'Neill's uh, report, he says right in there that <clears throat> the district needs to rethink the administrative structure necessary to support special education. Uh, I would question why uh, we would jump to add an additional administrator in that office. If we've done that in the past, uh, after removing one, we are in the same boat we were before. Um, I would like us to take a, a deeper look into this report, look at other venues that we can take to improve that whether it be communicating from building level administrators all the way up to the superintendent's office to help make sure that people's uh, jobs are properly uh, distributed. Um, it's mentioned in here there's a lack of communication, among other things. Um, just based off of this, I, I would like us to, before jumping to adding another superintendent or another uh, director in that office uh, to where we were two years ago, to look at other avenues to do that, especially considering we have other departments at the district office that have no director, uh, like the director of security and director of technology. Uh, finally, uh, on the topic of, of special ed, I just want to note that <clears throat> while Dr. Uh, O'Neill did mention a lot of these issues, we as a school board have been hearing these issues for the past two, three years from our staff, from our teachers, with the white papers, uh, emails, and so on. So. Um, we have kind of gone full circle hearing from our staff and now from an external auditor that we do have these problems, and I am very happy to see that we are bringing on staff in the school buildings to help 
uh, alleviate some of that pressure. Finally, uh, Don and I last week had the opportunity to go to a business external review committee at the high school. Um, it was a very interesting event. Uh, it was with uh, John Rice hosted it. Um, there were several staff members, community parents, uh, myself, I was the board rep on the committee. Um, we offer a lot of uh, college and career readiness tracks starting in ninth grade through 12th grade that, frankly, I didn't know about. Um, it's really incredible the kind of college credit that we can give these students. It really is uh, interesting to see that we have these course offerings, but people don't really seem to know about it. Um, the topic came up with communication, and I, and I think we really hit the nail on the head with that. Uh, communicating out to parents and to, and to students that when you get in the ninth grade there are these different paths that you can take uh, whether it be through business or um, project lead the way or uh, family consumer science there's a lot of different programs that will give these people credit um, in saying that I, I think that a lot of the conclusion that we drew there is there is a loss of continuity when you move from ninth grade to 10th grade because of the building change. Uh, these programs lose a lot of student support, a lot of student interest in this because uh, students may not know about it down in this building, but when they get up to the high school, they've already lost a year of these classes that they could have been taking, earning credits for that. So that being said, I would like us to um, do something we haven't done in about a decade. I would like us to look at possibly opening a committee again to looking into what a possible redistricting structure would look like. I would like to see if there's anything we can do to get the ninth graders with 10 through 12, maybe not necessarily all in one building. Um, there are various options for this. I know a few years ago when this was brought up, we, uh, we briefly mentioned the possibility of making this building a secondary location for a high school not necessarily meaning this district would have two buildings, uh, two separate high schools, but two different campuses where students would be able to be 9th through 12th uh, and go throughout both buildings for programming. I realize that's a, just a, a, an option, but I would like to see what it would look like if we came up with a committee to look at uh, possibility of redistricting to go to a, uh, a normal uh, grading structure, so K5, 6, 8, 9, 12. Um, other than that, I, I uh, thank you, Annette, for your budget presentation. It was great. It's a great first step moving forward, and it's, it's just really nice to uh, be able to put things back in that are uh, helping students and staff rather than just sitting here and cutting away. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. Mike oh, I'm sorry. Not to belabor this, just, just on to one of Mike's comments. Uh, the redistricting committee, if, if, if we had one, not too many years ago that did extensive work and came up with a recommendation. If we were to revisit that, I'd be Dr. Melvin, we haven't had one since Dr. Melvin. <laughs> well, we've had, you know, with the declining enrollment and, out, and other things, I think it would be interesting to take a look at and see where that would sit right. today. My only point that I was just interested as to what were those recommendations and what happened to them, that's all, in studying that, if we did, that's all I was Okay, anything from Scott, Mary, or Liz, or Mike? Okay, thank you all. Annette, Superintendent's comments. Well, I'd like to take a minute to talk about what's most important, and that's our students. And I just have to tell you, our students never cease to amaze me. So I have some good news to share. Uh, two junior high science Olympiad teams finished second and fifth and placed in the regional event. The second place team will be competing at the state level. Um, and I'm not going to mention specific districts, but we're pr particularly proud that it's the first time in 15 years that one of our neighboring districts didn't take the top two spots. So we're pretty excited to have slipped in there. So congratulations to them. Um, also, DECA um, competition was held on March 8th through 10th in Rochester. And our high school sent 16 business students the competition and took home eight top ten medals and had an overall winner in the Principles of Hospitality and Tourism event. And we have top ten medalists, Ryan Ingerson with three medals, Alex Heppel with one medal, Taylor Durante and Brianna Smith each with one medal, Madison Gerbersch with two medals. medals. And then we have um, Madison Gerbersch fourth place overall state winner 
and New York State DECA Honor Society inductees. We had Alan Garns, Alex Heppel, and Ryan Ingerson. So congratulations to them. The other thing, I know you're all aware that we have a partnership with CORE Federal Credit Union, and our students run a credit union at the high school. It's amazing. And not only do they run a credit union, but those students have been instrumental in terms of offering financial um, information to community groups, to parent groups, and also in terms of working directly with some of our students at the elementary and middle school level. And I keep hearing from the people at CORE how wonderful our kids are and how impressed they are. We have quite a group of students. And Jackie, you stole my thunder, the high school play. It was absolutely phenomenal. I've never seen a more talented group of students. Every single student's voice was phenomenal. So congratulations to them. And I do want to take one minute to talk about a very hot topic, and that is snow days. So we are officially out of snow days. We had five built into the calendar, and we've used all five. So let's hope that we don't have need to have any other emergency closings, because if we do, then we would have to be into April break. So we're just going to hold our, hold our breath and, um, and not think about that. We're in the process of uh, building our, our calendar for next year, and hopefully we'll be able to build five snow days in again because I think that that's what our winters seem to be requiring. So more to follow on that. Thank you. Routine action items 5A, consideration of approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education on March 6, 2017. B, consideration of the classification and school placement of disabled students certified by the District Committee on Special Education. Mm -hmm. C, consideration and classification of placement of preschool disabled students certified by the District Committee on Preschool Special Education. And D, acknowledgement of business office reports for January 2017. I will entertain a motion to take ABCD as a group and to approve. Mr. Harrington, Mr. McClintock, all in favor. Carried. Discussion action item 6A, acknowledgement of gifts. <coughs> ah, pardon me. <coughs> wow, brother. The Central New York Women's Bar Association has donated $100 to the district for the Main Street Early Education Program. Donors Choose has donated two, I don't know how to pronounce that, hokey stools for active sitting to the district for use at Roxell. And Donors Choose has donated 50 pounds of art clay to the district for classroom projects called For the Love of Clay at Roxborough Elementary School. Recommended action to accept the gifts with gratitude, motion Mike. Who is he? Oh, all in favor. Jackie on the second, all in favor. <coughs> 6B, the secret resolution for the District 2017 Capital Outlay Project. Don? <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this was uh, uh, mentioned in our, in our budget presentation that we'll be working on the Roxborough Road uh, middle school entryway to secure that single point of entry and make it a little more uh, uh, consistent with the format, the, the uh, structure at the high school. And uh, it's required that we actually have the board um, uh, do a seeker, adopt a seeker resolution uh, for that project. Um, and that's just laying the groundwork for that item in our budget. Yeah, do any questions? Motion to. I approve the resolution. Mr. Harrington, Ms. Scanlon, all in favor? Approved. C, resolution to approve the ballot propositions. Let me get it to come up. Here it comes. We've got the uh, bus purchase proposition and the uh, Salina Free Library proposition. Are there any questions on either of these? Is there a motion to approve. Cash. Nobody on my left. I'll go back to my right. <laughs> Mr. Munizio. All in favor? 
D, the notice of budget hearing and election. Again, I'm a little slow. Here we go. This is the legal notice of, which will appear in the paper about the vote and all the propositions thereof. Are there any questions of any of this? Uh, Connie, is there anything you want to say about this? Anything it's all here anyway. Okay. Anything else? No question? Okay. A motion to approve. Mr. McClintock. Mr. Fafalia. All in favor? And surplus of non-marketable equipment. I prefer to call some of it junk, but Don, uh, <laughs> anything there? Old, old broken down steamers from the food service department and some broken old plastic chairs and a large computer station. Be careful when you say broken and old, because some of us <laughs> here might, uh, Definitely might, take personal, might take personal comments there. Any uh, approval? Let's have a motion to approve. Mr. Harrington, Ms. Scanlon, all in favor? Okay, we've got personnel reports, instructional, support staff, administrative. I do have one retirement. We have Diane Norton, a bus attendant, going to retire after 22 years of service. So we wish her well, many years of a happy and healthy retirement. Uh, are there any questions, A, B, and C, that we need to take to executive session? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve 7 A, B, C as a group. Mr. Leon, Ms. Owens, all in favor? Motion for executive session. Let's read what that says. Motion to move into executive session for the purpose of hearing a parental appeal of a superintendent's decision to receive an update on two legal matters relative to potential litigation, to review the employment record of two individuals with action to follow on the parental appeal in a personal matter. Uh, motion, Mike. Second, George. All in favor? So moved. Executive session, 827. All of you seniors with your pink uh, forms for us to sign, come on up. I thought maybe it was Lemoyne or something because there was no name on it. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. See how we run board meetings. Try carefully. Because I simply can say that I'm not bothered with my mind. You 